Hey you folks, Quillington here, and welcome to another episode of our base building game series in Unity. And today, with some trepidation, we're going to start deleting objects. Which doesn't sound like the sort of thing that should be tricky, and honestly, might turn out to be perfectly fine. But every now and again, you discover that you've made certain assumptions about how the world works that get completely obliterated when you can actually destroy something. And actually, I guess the first question to answer is, how do we want to destroy objects? I mean, if we think of something like a rim world, for example, we've actually got two modes for doing that. There is a some sort of button, like here we've got bulldoze, but that's not what we're going to use. Instead, there's going to be like a deconstruct button, which is what I'm thinking. But you can sort of click and drag and it'll flag a whole bunch of stuff to be deconstructed. Um, on the other hand, in many of those games, including rim world, but prison architect and, and dwarf fortress and all these things, you have some sort of mode for selection. Which we can get to if we hit escape. We can. We're now in selection mode. We don't have a button for it, but uh, we've got that sort of thing going on. And where you could click on a piece of furniture, and then you actually get a pop up. So right now we just have this sort of tool tippy kind of window going on that's showing us the context of what's underneath our mouse. But uh, we'd click on it. We'd have a little selection box, and in there there might be a button to deconstruct. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. I think for now. Since we are probably a little while away from actually wanting to be able to click on things and fiddle with their numbers and whatever, but that's something that's clearly going to have to happen later. I think we will work on a sort of deconstruct button instead. Uh, yeah. And we'll see how that goes. Sure. I don't know why I'm so scared, but I am. Uh, I think partially because it's going to take some amount of user interface work, which always has uh, uh, the ability to break in spectacular ways, and partially because it's going to require, yeah, removing things from the game in ways we might not expect. So, first thing I guess we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out um, our mouse mode controller and or build mode controller, what we might have to make a change for there to add a sort of deconstruct button. Uh, I might mean, I guess we could go ahead and create the button now, but we have to figure out what it's going to call. So our build button, our build menu over here, we'll have, um, I'm going to rename bulldoze to, it's actually remove floor, because that's really what it's there for. Uh, that is not the right thing. This is the thing here. So that's actually going to be remove floor, but I'm going to duplicate this and have a deconstruct deconstruct furniture button, which is a little bit wordy, but that is what it's there for. Can I fit that in there? Yeah, just barely. All right, good enough. And we're going to need to call something. So right now, we do tell the build mode that we are in deconstruct. That's interesting. So that's, so our mouse currently doesn't really get information about the fact that we're in deconstruct mode. It's purely the build mode controller, which is going to get told by the mouse if we're dragging stuff. Um, build mode. Oh, that's right. Right now, the so-called remove floor mode. So it was bulldoze, but I think it's much more accurate now to call it remove floor, because what it does is it sets build mode as object to be false, because we're not building, we're not putting down furniture, we're not putting down objects. I suppose we could rename this. Um, actually, let's do that. Let's say build mode is furniture. So there we go. So we set build mode as furniture to false, but then we set what type of tile we are building to floors as opposed to, um, or sorry, we set it to empty as opposed to floor. That's pretty legit. But what does it mean to be in deconstruct mode? I think what we're going to do is I think we want an enum for the build mode. There's something to be said about that. I mean, we also have... We have a mouse mode at this point. Select build. And I think, I think this is leading to a certain amount of duplication of logic. I don't know, not really. I mean, select mode just means build mode is not engaged at all. We're not interacting with the world. All we're doing is when we click somewhere, we want to select whatever is on our, on our mouse. When we're in build mode, when we click somewhere, we want to do a thing to that territory, which is where the build mode controller takes over. It, it, it is a little bit separated, and it is a little bit weird that when we trigger certain buttons, uh, certain modes get toggled. Start build mode. Yeah, I'm not super keen on it. 
but I guess we'll keep going with what we've got for now. But build mode is furniture should probably change. So let's go ahead and get another e um, enum. It could be, I guess we'll make it over here. That's fine. Public enum. Um, build mode? Sure. And so the options are uh, floor, furniture. So the remove floor is really a variant, is, is a floor build mode where the floor tile we're putting down is dot empty. So we have floor, furniture, and then finally we have deconstruct. All right, I think that's fine. So this Boolean is really changing. Like that. And it's going to default to build mode dot floor is the default build mode for us. So is object draggable. So really what we're going to say is, uh, so if build mode is equal to build mode dot floor, or build mode is equal to build mode dot deconstruct. Both of these are draggable modes to be in. And then otherwise, we make sure that we can do like one by one. And we might want to change that around. In fact, uh, there's been some pretty good feedback about making whether something is draggable or mass buildable or something of that uh, nature part of the furniture prototype. And I think that will be a good idea. For now, we'll just check. If it's one by one, we'll say it's draggable, even though clearly for doors, it's really dumb to have doors being draggable. Um, and maybe most things. In fact, maybe most things except for walls and I don't know carpets or something. I'm not sure uh, what will happen. Well, the carpets are probably going to be a type of floor, so never mind. But anyway, uh, other than walls, maybe most things aren't actually draggable, but we'll, we'll leave this in for now because it doesn't actually hurt too badly. So yeah, deconstruct mode is also draggable. That's fine. Uh, build mode over here. We set build mode to be equal to build mode dot floor mode. And what type of tile? It's a floor tile. Here's bulldoze. We set the floor mode, but we have it empty. Here we have build mode set to dot furniture, which is all good. And then we're going to set another build mode to call de deconstruct like that. It's not going to need any parameters like this dot deconstruct mode doesn't need an object type at all. And then we again, we start build mode. We're telling the mouse that, hey, when we click, we when you, when the mouse clicks or drag finishes, we want to be told about it. That's really what build mode is. It's us telling the mouse, yeah, we want to know when when something mouse wise happen, happens. And the mouse is responsible for butting out of build mode if the player hits escape or something like that. So that's, I guess that's fine. We might just rename this to something else, but I don't know, it's pretty legit. Okay, so we've got a, uh, we've got some sort of function we can call now. So let's go. And our bouton right over here, Oh, yeah, we still have some technical problems, but that's okay. We should still be able to say... No, I guess because the compilation error is stopping that from being recognized. So we still have a reference to build mode over here. Um, so if build mode is equal to build mode dot furniture, then we do this. Um, else if build mode is equal to build mode dot floor, we do that. And finally, I guess else if build mode is equal to build mode dot deconstruct to do. And for the sake of argument, we can put in an elf over here, an elf, yes, an elf. Unimplemented build mode. So just let people know. So this right over here is what we're about to do, the deconstruct stuff. Uh, but let's check to see if that's compiling. I don't remember if the mouse actually makes a call. It looks like it does. Yeah. The mouse, at some point, checks to see if the build mode was true or false for furniture mode, but because we want to know if we're, we, we want to put in a, a preview. So we're just going to go and check there. How come did that happen? That was weird. Do to do. And now we are all groovy compiling wise. So the deconstruct furniture button, we can make sure to call build mode controller dot set mode deconstruct. And it doesn't need a parameter. OK, so that doesn't do anything right now. If we hit play. We can verify that things are still working. Can we still queue down an oxygen generator? And we can. Can we build floor over here? Indeed we can. Can we remove floor? Yes, we can. Can we hit deconstruct furniture? Yep, and we can drag, but it doesn't do anything. Okay. I think all the user interface part of that is done. So, deconstructing. So, wow. Hmm. So we get a tile. 
So we have a tile. And we have to remove the furniture. Well, okay, we don't just destroy the furniture. Ooh, that's an interesting point. Well, right now we're just going to destroy the furniture. But what we're re really going to do is we are going to be not just removing the furniture, but its component bits are going to be... Well, that's an interesting question. I guess there's two things. Like, if you think of something like Prison Architect, Rim World, um, even Dwarf Fortress, sometimes there's the concept of deconstructing, and sometimes there's a concept of uninstalling. So, for example, if we have a sofa down, it is entirely possible that we may want to uninstall the sofa. So we still have a completed sofa, but it has been put back in its box, can be moved into a stockpile, and later on can get be, be placed back into the world. That's the uninstall version of it. And then there's the deconstruct version of it, which is really what you would do to a wall, because I don't think it makes sense to uninstall the wall and then have a wall in a box or something like that. Instead, what you do is you pull apart the wall, and you are left with a certain number of components afterwards you get back so let's say it takes five pieces of metal to build a wall maybe you get three pieces of metal back when you pull it apart because you know some of the nails are bent and so on and so forth i think it's probably legit for our furniture itself to have a sort of deconstruct function i think that's a good centralized location for something like that and it could, this could also have a uninstall function as well but for now we'll have some sort of public void deconstruct wow Spelling is hard. Deconstruct. There we go. Like that. That's going to do something. We'll do a debug.log for deconstruct over here so that we know where we are in our code. So we just call furniture deconstruct. Done. Easy. Hey, simple stuff. Okay, so we still have to do the work. But I think this is a, a really a good place to put the logic for that. So for now, for our first pass, what are we going to do? Well, really... What we have to do is tell the tile that it's furniture. Oh, it's got an uninstall furniture function over here. But I... First of all, I'm going to rename this, even though it's not really a word. I'm going to call this unplaced furniture, which is just responsible for clearing the furniture parameter which we could technically do directly right now. It could go tile.furniture equals null because it's not protected. But later on, it probably will be protected. So for now, I think it's fine to just say unplace because we have a place furniture, which all place furniture does is it effectively sets the things. Oh, including multi-tile. Aha, excellent. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so we're going to do something... Um. Basically, we're going to grab this code over here. And first, we're just going to say, obviously, if furniture is equal to null, then this makes no sense, and we just return. But otherwise, we can go our furniture's width and height, and we're going to go through each one of these tiles, and we're just going to set its furniture to be equal to null. So now, the furniture is no longer placed in the tile. And then furniture over here, well, presumably at this point, at this point, no, no data structures should be pointing to us. So we should get um, garbage collected. And actually, that's even true, because I was going to say our, our sprites... But our sprites don't actually point to the furniture. Well, no, actually, that's not true. They do have a dictionary that points here. So we do still have a reference to it. So right now it would be a memory leak. Um, but we're going to clean that up in a second. The question I have, and I don't remember this, our world, when it runs all the... Hmm? Oh, uh, return false, just to say that we didn't actually do anything. That's not actually an error, but it's whatever. Our world, on every update... calls all the furniture. So we do have this furniture's array in the world. So I guess we have to remove ourselves from that since we don't long, no longer exist. So we're going to have to say tile, well we still have a tile, dot world, dot furniture's, dot remove this. 
And later on, we probably will want some sort of functions to do this because we may not want to expose furnitures, but for now it's perfectly fine. And it'll be easy to correct later on, so that's okay. So we no longer want the world to call our update functions. We want to remove ourselves from the tile. And then last but not least, we want to say, um, we need to, we don't have a callback, do we? We have callbacks for when a furniture gets changed. But we need something like when the furniture just stops being furniture. Now that'll be true whether it gets deconstructed or um, uninstalled or destroyed or all these things. Um, just call it on removed. I think that would be a reasonable name for on for our, our thing over here. I mean, unless on changed would also handle it, but I, I don't feel that that's a true. And actually, that's an interesting point. We could, rather than have the furniture remove itself from the world, we could have the furniture inform the world that we are no longer a thing, and then the world will remove it from the array. That might actually feel a little bit better. But it's kind of a moot point. So really what's going on here is in our furniture sprite controller, and we might end up doing that for the world at some point, but in our furniture sprite controller, when furniture gets created and we register the on changed callback, we want we need another function here that's like on furniture removed. Furniture fern. On removed callback, which doesn't currently exist. Removed. Removed. Callback on removed. There we go. And then when we uninstall this piece of furniture, we have to say if, whoops, if this is not equal to null, then we call this for everyone who wants to know about it. So yeah, so you can see how like you know what? I kind of like it. Public void on furniture removed. Furniture fern. We just say furnitures dot ooh whoops furnitures dot remove fern. <clears throat> like this. So we've got that and then we don't get like furniture created though. Does the world never get told no it must. Right, we've got to place furniture here. And that's when we add things to the database. Right over there. So what we need to do is say for the furniture, fern dot register on removed callback, do this. So that way it'll clean itself up. So this is where we add it to our little list of active furniture and it'll be removed over here. So that gets called automatically. And I think that's a little bit more elegant. So we just tell the tile, hey, we're unplacing you. We're calling all the removed callbacks, which should be good. So in the furniture sprite controller, what we have to do here is we say, okay, great. Um, first, let's make sure you're in the database. Otherwise, something really funky has just happened. Then we are going to grab the game object from there. And we're just going to say, we're going to destroy, no, destroy fern go. So we'll no longer have the sprites in the game. And we need to make sure that our furniture game object map dot remove fern from there. So it's no longer in there. And yeah, so now we no longer have a reference to it in our map because the game object no longer exists. So that's groovy. So oh, we need to pass furniture to it. That's right. Or we need to pass this to it. So if we hit play, and then we load our map. And then I uh, grab deconstruct furniture. And I say, grab this. Oh, this might generate an error because it's hitting more than one. 
All right, so this is giving me some errors because there's nothing in it, which is fine. Although we could probably go and just check for that. Um, if t.furniture not equals null, because it's perfectly fine for us to get called with a tile that happens to not have furniture, especially with a drag select. So we're going to do this instead. So that way we won't get that error. Just keep it a little neater. It'll be a little easier to see. So load. What's quite interesting, I think, is the fact that the home tile for this oxygen gener generator is actually the bottom left tile. But I'm just going to click on the top right tile. Oops, and we get... How is 110 generating an error? Not 109, but 110. Let me make sure these have all been saved, first of all, that we're actually operating on the latest version, although we must be. I didn't see a little unsaved icon. Strange. And that... What? How come it doesn't happen in the bottom right corner? No, it still does. That's weird. It's not actually calling the function more than once. I bet you because it's gone at a certain point. It's getting partway through. It's getting partway through um, this and then flaking. Oh, of course. Because what's happening is at some point we are setting our own furniture ID to null and then it's going here and it's trying to do null.height. Yeah, that's why it's happening on this inner loop. Aha, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so A, I could cache the furniture, the, either the furniture first or I could cache the, the width and height first in the interest of having one less thing to type. Furniture F is equal to t.furniture is equal to my furniture. And then we just say F and we say F. There we go. So we're changing the thing that we're looping on, which is often very dangerous. So now if I deconstruct, I should be able to click on any part of this and have it go away. So the top right corner works. Let's try that again. I'll try the bottom left corner. Should all work exactly the same. And it does. Because the furniture just calls unplace on the tile that it considers itself to belong to. So it doesn't matter what tile I started with, it should always run the code on the bottom left corner. So that gets cleaned up, it's out of the database, um, the oxygen is no longer being generated. Actually, is it just me or did the oxygen go above 20%, which it shouldn't have been doing? Did I? I think I saved accidentally without the oxygen generator, but that's okay. Let's build one there. And let's deconstruct. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm missing the, the zeros. It's not at 20, it's not at 38% right now. It's at 0 0.03. So that's fine. So it's at 3%. Um, so yeah, there, it stops running the oxygen generator. Presumably it has all been garbage collected unless we've forgotten something. At some point, we probably have to do some sort of little memory analysis to see if that's true, but there we go. We should also be able to, let's get a whole slew of these oxygen generators like that. We should be able to box select a bunch of these. They all get deconstructed. Lovely. With no errors. Now we can also deconstruct walls, which is fine. But right now, if we mouse over, this room, this these tiles still consider themselves to be in room one, as opposed to these tiles, which are in room zero, the outside. Well, clearly, these are part of the outside now because they, you know, they've got a direct path. But after we destruct an object, in particular a wall, we are not currently calling the code to recalculate the rooms, which we obviously have to do. So that is, uh, that's what we're going to do in the next episode. And I, I don't know, this turned out to be relatively reasonable, but it'll be interesting to see what happens next. And of course, then the other thing will be to add little callbacks here so that when we destroy an object um, in our XML file, right, our XML file, quote unquote, which is not really an XML file, but over here, when we define our various pieces of furniture in the create furniture prototype, right, we include things like, here, for example, we add a thing for the job that creates it and the requirements for the job. But what it should also have is some sort of callback, maybe when it gets destroyed, or maybe just a list of inventory when it gets destroyed. All right, it's very easy to assume, like, we've got some sort of parameter, like, 
uh, furniture prototype or yeah, furniture prototypes wall dot um, inventory after destruction uh, or deconstruction is really what it should be. And then we give it some array of inventory objects, which may or may not get sort of scattered around an area. So it's going to be that sort of thing. And then as part of the deconstruction, we will run that. And again, we want to be able to differentiate between deconstruction and uninstallation. So if we have a sofa, it doesn't have a deconstruct option. Like it doesn't generate a bunch of like steel plates on the ground, but rather it generates a sofa in a box, which I guess ultimately is the same thing. The, the difference is, in the case of a wall, we leave three steel plates behind. Or maybe later on, it'll be three steel plates and some plastic tubing or fiber optics, right? So a collection of multiple things. In the case of a sofa, it'll only generate one thing that happens to be a sofa in a box. Again, if, if that's how we go, which may or may not be. But that will have to wait until later. Next time, I do want to tackle the problem of what happens when we destroy a wall or a door. How does that work in terms of combining the rooms? Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone who pledged on Patreon in April and who are supporting these videos from May through to early June. And to these mic check level supporters, we've got Wes Oldenboving, Craig Mortel, Neil Balaki Milner, Speedy Savant, Valiant Cake Fiend, Aaron Toivson, Marius Field Vold, Jan Torre Vell, uh, Julian Auger Lafon, Steven Steger, Michael McClintock, Kale the Quick, Drazion, Bite Rash, adjective Jason Yanti and to absolutely everyone who watches and shares and favorites and subscribe these videos uh subscribes to these videos appreciate you all thank you very so much and I'll see you next time